So guys, it is that time of the week again, and we are back with some more championship transfer rumours. A lot to talk over in today's video, and we don't actually have all too long left of this transfer window. The main transfer window goes ahead and closes on the 5th of October. However, the domestic market is open until the 16th, so clubs have still got a bit more time to get some deals over the line. We'll be discussing them in today's video. As always, if you do go into enjoy, make sure to leave a like and get all your thoughts in the comments down below with all the players that you've been linked to so far, and how happy have you been with your club's business? Before we do get into anything though, we do have one championship club who is in action in midweek. We see Brentford going up against Fulham in the EFL Cup in what is going to be a repeat of the playoff final. Can Brentford get one over on Fulham? Now, Fulham in the Premier League have not started out like well, have they? Three games, three pretty convincing losses. They lost 3-0 at the weekend against Aston Villa. And that defence is leaking goals at the moment. We've got a few transfer rumours regarding Fulham in terms of championship players that they're looking at to bolster their defensive options because at the moment they have looked less than convincing. As a prediction in that one, I think that Brentford may take them, you know. I'm going to go 2-1 Brentford. Let me know down below what you see happening in that one. But now without any further ado, let's go ahead and hop into some completed transfers which have gone through in the past seven days. Derby County completed the signing of highly rated youngster Bobby Duncan. He's coming over from Florentina. He was a really highly rated prospect at the Liverpool setup. Chose to go to Italy. Things didn't quite work out for him there. And he's now looking to rekindle his career back in England. We saw Reading complete the loan signing of Lewis Gibson. He's coming on loan from Everton for the season. Spent the second half of last season out alone at Fleetwood where he did well. He comes in to add a bit more competition to their defensive options. Nottingham Forest completed the deal for left back Nicholas Ionu. The fullback's coming over from Cyprus where he's been playing his football since 2014. Came up through the Manchester United Youth Academy. He has made several first team appearances for the Cyprus national team and there's another option coming in to bolster that Forest back line. Obviously they also completed the deals for Harry Arter and Scott McKenna as well. We saw them playing at the weekend. Roberto Pereira has completed the move back to Italy. He's gone back to U Udinese from Watford. Not all too many surprises in this one. I think this one was always on the cards really. No one really expected him to stick around for the championship. Enjoyable player to watch for Watford over the years. You know on his day he was right up there. Made over 100 appearances for them. But those were some of the completed deals which have gone through in the past week or so. Now without any further ado let's hop into some transfer speculation. So if we start out with Sheffield Wednesday it looks as if a deal is in place for Callum Patterson. Now at Cardiff Callum Patterson's been a bit of a utility player really. He's played absolutely all over. Right back in midfield or as a striker. In their promotion season from the championship a few years ago, he was really effective being that target man for them. Obviously, he's got a lot of good attributes about him. Really good athlete, big, strong, powerful. But also has a turn of pace about him, you know. Looking into that Sheffield Wednesday squad, him and possibly Josh Windass, I think, could have a really good connection between themselves. Two players who could bounce each other quite well. But because of his versatility, he can come in and fill a number of positions, you know. If you need him to be part of that midfield three, he can be as a wing-back. I think he'd do a job there. And if reports are to be believed, the fee being just 500k, I think Sheffield Wednesday are getting an absolute bargain there. Nottingham Forest are said to be keen on West Brom winger Kemal Grosicki. Now, I do have a couple of reservations about Forest going after another player who's over 30. However, does someone like Grosicki come in and improve this Forest side? For me, yes, absolutely. In the Championship from his time at Hull and then briefly at West Brom, one of the best technical wingers in the league for me from his time here. I think he's a wonderfully gifted technical player, great at set pieces. However, when I look at that Forest squad at the moment, they shouldn't be in need of more creativity. You know, they have the players there at the moment. It's a system which isn't allowing these creative players to thrive. You know, we've seen someone like Joe Carvalho really struggle for game time there. Things not quite clicking for him. They've got one of the best creators in the league in Luke Freeman there. It's just not quite clicking for them in this system at the moment. Interestingly enough, I did see that there are a few Forest first team players who aren't training with the first team at the moment, Jao Carvalho being one of them. I think Adoma, Bong and Clough were the other. so I'm interested to see what happens with all of their futures. Obviously it's been a big summer so far for Forest in terms of incoming players, so you would expect a few to be on the way out. Another club looking to strengthen their forward options is still Derby County. They've been heavily linked with a move for Dermstadt striker, Serdar Dernstein. He's most recently been playing his football in the Bundesliga 2, so Germany's second division and does have a very good goal scoring record there. Last season got 16 goals and six assists. He's quite a unit as well, quite a presence up front. He's six foot three, but also has a decent ability on the ball, so can link up with others quite well. Obviously, Derby looking for that natural replacement for Chris Martin, who they've not yet to replace. Potentially, as an alternative, Derby have also been linked with West Brom striker Charlie Austin. Now, Austin had an interesting time last time round in the championship. Definitely not the striker that he once was in terms of his mobility and things like that. You very much have to play to his strengths, however. Still got into double figures for them, 11 goals in all competitions, and towards the end of the season, was 
was very much being used as an impact substitute in off the bench. He wasn't someone who was going to be playing 90 minutes for them. You know, in most cases for West Brom last season, it was, you know, they let Robson Kanu do the running work for about 70 minutes and then bring Charlie Austin on with half an hour to go. I still think he's a good finisher, but you very much need to put the chances there for him. He's not going to be someone who's going to create all a lot on his own. Reading has still been linked with a possible loan move for Alpha Semino. We saw him last season in the championship out on loan at Nottingham Forest on loan from Benfica. Reading are looking for a similar option this season however. This one seems to have been held up for some time now. There's also recent reports coming out that there's interest from France as well in the midfielder obviously with Reading's injury list piling up. I think we do expect to see a couple more additions coming in in the next few weeks at Reading. Semino was an interesting player for Nottingham Forest last season. Started out really strongly for them and just seemed to fade a little bit and as the season went on. In the right role, I think he'd be very good at this level. Over the last few weeks, Reading have also been heavily linked with a move for Atletico Madrid winger Ricardo Riquelme. However, Bournemouth are now interested in the winger as a positive alternative for David Brooks now. There's been long time there's been long-standing interest from Reading in this one. He made a handful of appearances for the first team last season, but has played the majority of his football for the B team so far. Really highly rated winger over there, only 20 years old. So the player's definitely got options to weigh up in terms of his potential clubs that he could be coming to in England this season. Both Reading and Swansea have been linked to AFC Wimbledon target man Joe Piggott who's available for possibly as little as 200k according to recent reports now. Had a good goal scoring record in League 1 for the player he has got 22 goals in his last two seasons at Wimbledon. We'll see if there's any movement on that front. Obviously Swansea still very much after a striker. I think that Reading could possibly do with a backup to someone like Lucas Jow who is very injury prone. Obviously picked up an injury recently. After that we then get to the Todd Cantwell speculation. Now he was left out of the Norwich squad at the weekend. Some interesting comments from Daniel Clark after the match as well, obviously. A player, one of the few players in that Norwich squad who seemed to really thrive at Premier League level. Got six goals and two assists in what was a standout season for him and the interest from Leeds United is to be understood. Now, the fees being talked about at the moment are all about £15 million. Pounds. Norwich fans limited down below. Would you be demanding a little bit more? I really like Todd Cantwell. I think he's got quite a bit about him. Only 22 years old. Clearly has the confidence to back himself to go to that next level. Give he did go to Leeds, Bielsa as a manager who could absolutely take his game from like here to here. He could absolutely skyrocket his career. I think this was always the fear for Norwich fans. Obviously, it was a really busy start to the transfer window. They brought in a lot of creative players moving forward, but there was always the perception that there would be some people going towards the end of the window. You know, Emi Buendia, another player who was left out of the squad at the weekend as well as speculation continues to swirl around his future. Norwich fans, let me know down below. Buendia and Cantwell, what are their price tags for you? We then seen Fulham as the latest club to be interested in Ben Godfrey, Norwich's centre half now. Ben Godfrey, could he set his heights maybe a little bit higher than Fulham? Obviously, Everton have been interested as well in the centre half. Another player who's highly rated at Norwich, who they're not going to be able to let go on the cheap, you know. Norwich would demand quite a price tag for Ben Godfrey, I'd imagine. Another player Fulham have been looking at is Watford centre half Craig Dawson, obviously at the other end of the spectrum than someone like Ben Godfrey, who's very much an up and coming player. Craig Dawson, you know what you're getting from him, experienced centre half in the Premier League. That deal I could see happening. Burnley are off the Bournemouth centre-half, Steve Cook. You'd imagine that Bournemouth will want to do everything they can to keep hold of him. He's been a brilliant player over the years. Been there since 2012, racked up well over 300 appearances for them. And I think he's had a good start to life back in the Championship as well. He was excellent at the weekend in the game against Norwich where they kept that clean sheet. Good leader at the back. I think his experience has been vital for them lately, obviously. He's got quite a few up-and-coming younger defenders in and around him who I think will learn off Cook. He's the sort of player who fits the profile of the normal target that Burnley would go after so the link makes sense. However, you'd imagine, like I said, that Bournemouth will want to do everything they can to keep him. What of a striker, Luis Suarez, looks to be on his way back to Spain and to Granada. Now, there have been conflicting reports on this one. Some outlets reporting that this is a loan-to-buy option, whereas others have reported that it's just an outright they're going to be buying him. Some outlets in Spain have been saying that. Now, myself, I was really looking forward to seeing what Suarez could do in the Championship. He absolutely ripped things up last season in the Segunda Division in Spain. And the player's clearly got quite a bit about him, you know. Only 22 years old, so he's got scope to really develop into something, but as of right now, it's looking more than likely that he will be off. Ishmael Assar has been another Watford player who's been linked away recently. Manchester United reportedly have inquired about the winger, obviously. We saw him back in Championship action at the weekend. If he gets a full season at this level, I think he could be really quite special, obviously. Myself, as like a Championship YouTuber, I want to see as many top highly rated players in the league as possible. Assar's definitely one of them. United will potentially pursue this deal if they couldn't get the Jadon Sancho deal over the line, which has seemed to drag on for absolutely ages 
Hughes now. We saw being incredibly highly rated though, he'd be going for like 35 million upward. We'll wait and see what the future holds for him. Bit of a surprising one up next. Bournemouth have been linked with a move for Birmingham midfielder Gary Gardner. Now, I quite like Gary Gardner. I think the role he's done at Birmingham has been quite underrated, really. However, they now have an absolute abundance of options in that role, don't they? With new incomings, other players who are already at the club. Now, Gardner wouldn't be my first, you know, suggestion of players to ship away from Birmingham. But with Bournemouth still keen to add to their squad, we'll see if that one develops into anything. West Ham at the moment seem to be linked to every championship centre-half under the sun, the latest of which being Joe Rodon, obviously massively highly rated at Swansea. I think he's absolutely fantastic, both positionally and on the ball. I also think he's a decent leader as well with, for the age he is, only 22 years old. West Ham are ready to make a £15 million bid. Can I see Swansea accepting that? I think that with some of the fees that centre-halves have gone for in this league previously, you know, you look at the Adam Webster deal, for instance, I think Swansea would up that price quite a bit. Previously in the window, we've had links to Manchester United. Leicester as well have been another club who I've seen being linked recently. If the money was right, then he probably would be sold, but there's no doubt he would be a massive blow to that Swansea side. Celtic's interest in Bristol City winger Nicholas Eliasson has resurfaced. There's also been a bit of speculation linking him to France as well. Aston Villa have been long-term admirers of the play. He's only got a year left on his contract. It does run out in the summer. The sticking point with Eliasson is he's obviously a massively talented player. You know, assist last season in the Championship, he was right up there. However, However, with this new system, Bristol City have been playing the 3-5-2. He doesn't really have a role in there. I know they've experimented at times with him playing as a fullback and a little bit more centrally, but naturally, I think he is best as a winger. And like I say, in this current system, they can't really accommodate that. So with only a year left the sale, I wouldn't be all too surprised to see him moved on eventually. Cracking talent just doesn't quite fit what they're building around at the moment. Preston North End still in search of a striker for this transfer window. We've been knocked back on multiple targets. We are now reportedly, according to local press, turning our attention to the MLS now. With all the information I've gathered, seemingly the most likely target seems to be Jordan Morris currently playing his football for Seattle Sounders. A respectable goal scoring record in the MLS so far. He averages a goal every three or so matches. Last season scored 13 goals in all competitions. Obviously, it's a tough one to translate how a player is going to do adapting from the MLS to coming into the championship. You never really know. But fits the bill in terms of the type of striker we're after. Six foot, can hold the ball up and is quite mobile. We'll wait and see if anything does manage to materialise from that. Also, a bit more news surrounding the championship MLS. Barnsley manager Gerhard Struber is heavily being linked with the move at the moment to New York Red Bulls with potentially an offer on the table for the manager to make that move over to America. Now, Gerhard Struber, massively rated manager at Barnsley, I think with the job he did there last season, there was always going to be a few clubs, you know, looking around to poach him away from that role. Watford over the summer were one club who seemed to be very interested, but the move to the MLS does surprise me a little bit, but as a young manager looking to establish his career, that may be the next trajectory in it. So, Barnsley fans, I'd love to get your reaction to this rumour. Bit of an one but Alan Brown has been linked with a move to Turkey and to Trabzonspor. Now, the Turkish press can always be a little bit hit and miss when they come out with a story like this, but the reports are that they're looking to sign Preston midfielder Alan Brown for around 3.2 million. Now, he is another of the North End stars whose contract does expire at the end of the season. Probably up until this point has been the one with sort of like the least speculation surrounding him. But with English manager Eddie Newton in charge over there, they're looking to turn their recruitment over towards England. At this point in time, I'm not convinced there's all too much in it, but it's one to keep your eye on. Liverpool youngster Liam Miller's been linked with a few championship clubs. He spent last season out on loan at Kilmarnock in Scotland. The championship clubs said to be monitoring the attacker situation at Liverpool at the moment are QPR, Blackburn, Stoke, Wickham, Millwall and Rotherham. So a whole bunch of clubs interested at the moment. But guys, there we have it. There we go. That will now wrap it up for today's video. Like we said, loads of speculation going around the league at the moment. Get all your thoughts in the comments down below. But if you did go on to enjoy, make sure to leave a like and please do stick around and subscribe for a bit of regular championship content. And we're now well into this championship season season and things are going to continue to unfold on the channel. So guys, thanks for sticking around and I'll see you all in the next one.